Season two, episode uh, ten. yeah, or ten, but I, we decided we weren't going to binary the season numbers um, because that's too hard. Um, yeah, I'm back uh, with my name is Chris Jazz Sequence on the internet. I am with Gary Binary Gary on the internet. He's a professional deception specialist and um, a professional what deception specialist. I was trying to throw you off the trailer. Yeah, uh, but yeah, you found. Uh, and Allison, who's Allison Plus on the internet, who is a librarian at a library that nobody goes to, um, and is also responsible for uh, asking us questions that we don't know the answers to. But she knows the answers to because she has access to all the books and no interruptions. And all the things. <laughs> and no interruptions, that's the key part of that. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, how are you guys doing? Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. 2019, clean slate. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> I was... Uh, um, I had a call last Wednesday evening, although in the context of a podcast, who the hell knows when that was? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so let's just say it was like several days ago. Eight, to be exact. I <laughs> uh, was some friends. Um, and the conversation was... Uh, resolutions, yay or nay? Uh, and then if yay, uh, what? <laughs> what? Resoluting. Resolving. I'm, is, is that a query for the general population of yay or nay resolutions? I mean, if you want to grab out to go with it, go, go for it. If not, that's fine too. I just I'm not anti-resolution. I thought that was your anti-resolution? No, I'm not, I'm not anti-resolution, oh. but I'm not, I don't know, I don't have anything definitive currently. I kind of like try to pick a thought or a theme and like crunch all my ideas around that, but I don't really have anything as of yet. Yeah, we'll see. Something, yeah. something will be a brewing, I'm sure. That's I cool. have no resolutions. I had not resolved to do anything. Um, I thought about it, and that was about it. I mean, I thought about the concept of New Year's resolutions, but. I also like the idea of non-goals, like things that I was doing fine last year that I just kind of want to keep doing, um, rather than turn over a new leaf, where I'm just like, oh, well, like, I was really rocking out. Like, I eat a lot of fruit. I'd like to keep eating a lot of fruit, <laughs> or whatever it is. <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's great, though. Yeah. That, that moment of recognition, like, yeah, I don't have any like major things that I need to quote unquote fix. So keep sticking with what's working for me. Well, okay. I definitely have things I need to fix, but yeah. like there's there's still good chunks there that like need to be like continued rather than just like abandoned. <laughs> You're like I have things I need to fix, and they'll either take way less than a year or way more than a year. So to tie them to resolution would be ridiculous. Well, yeah, and you don't want to like I don't know. No one wants to set themselves up for failure, or at least I don't. I don't know. Maybe maybe I should speak for myself. Who raise your hand if you want to set yourself up for failure? And, and I mean, I'm a programmer, so <laughs> there will be frustrations and failures along the way. I don't know. My Two leaf is ago, okay. I don't need to turn over a whole new one. Two nights ago, I got a Slack ping. I usually ignore them in the evenings, but for some reason, I was on the computer and saw it. And QA was like, "Should this 500?" No. no. The answer is like always no. Like, always. <laughs> I even know that ticket. Should this 500? Yeah. <laughs> For those of you who are not familiar with uh, uh, internet errors, a server error 500 is an internal server error where something fairly significant has broken and refused to let the page render. <laughs> Usually caused if by it, explosion. programming <laughs> error. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, 100% programming error all the time. The more you know. Doo -doo -doo. The more you know. 
Uh, I was talking, I was telling my, my family about the podcast, my parents about the podcast over the break. Uh, and I explained, you know, it's binary jazz because I'm jazz sequenced. He's binary Gary. And we number our episodes in binary. We're on, we've done about 40 something episodes. And, and he, um, and he's like, oh, so, but you number it in binary. I'm like, yeah. So what's, what number are you on? I'm like, one, zero, one, one. He's like, okay, never mind. <laughs> See, it's a good way to, like, no one's, no one's counting. <laughs> no one cares. Yeah. What it, I what just it was telling my family to... about the podcast, mostly because I was trying to teach them how to upload podcasts, and then I quickly realized that I was like, oh, this is here. I'll download this one for you. I'm on it, which will like entice you to like mm -hmm. learn this process. Um, but it didn't go as planned. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. Maybe next holiday season, we'll, we'll get everybody on board with podcasts. <laughs> yeah, podcasts became a topic of, of conversation more than once. So it just sort of came up. I'm like, well, I kind of know a little bit about podcasts because a little bit. We have one. Okay. Well, and also, I'm always surprised to discover that I'm on a podcast. Because <laughs> it this does just feel like hanging out, and then people talking mm -hmm. like, yeah, you know, oh, I did a podcast interview last week. I'm like, I did one. Oh no, wait, I actually host one. Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> you're not invited. Sorry. We're legitimate people. <laughs> this legitimizes us, right? Like, I don't yeah. know. It just sets us forever in the archives of the internet. I don't know about forever. Oh man, Internet Archive. <laughs> do you do you use the Internet Archive to like pull like someone's like, hey, do you have a portfolio? You're like, crap. <laughs> and then like, the Internet Archive for your previous work. Uh, no, that's not a thing that I do. Um, probably I should though because totally not a thing I've ever done either. Obviously, just a crazy <laughs> because after several idea. uh several like computer changes and hard drive wipes and various other things. And uh, I don't think I have anything remotely similar to relating anything relating to previous work that I've done. That's the answer. Well, that's, so that's the cool thing with Internet Archive, right? You hit, you've got a screenshot and then you annotate the screenshot, explain what it did and say, sorry, the code's proprietary. We're gone. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it for, I've used it for like getting, like scraping past blog posts that I didn't like back up um, from ages and ages and ages ago before I knew that things disappeared. <laughs> I've I've used it to find old websites of mine that I no longer maintain that don't exist anymore. The domains that have gone by the wayside. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I used to have a I used to have a site on sfgoth.net. Uh, and I actually had I had two because I had one site that was mine and one site that was the sfgoth.net uh, models index. Um, which had about eight people, <laughs> and um, and then I had one on uh, my old college server uh, that is no more. That's amazing. Oh. I've I have pulled at various times most of the content off of those things though. At least the content. What's your, that what's your long, now that you pull that content, what's your long term archive content? Uh, I, I, when I pulled the content off, I saved them as pages on my regular site. And then that gets backed up. Ah, okay. So, so that, yeah, gotcha. So now, in perpetuity, that's backed up until the next time <laughs> something breaks. Yeah, well, jazzsequence.com is never going to die. It's just always going to be forever. I actually bought domains for the kids over the break, too. Um, Aww. Yeah, I got I got I got Gavin Reynolds dot com, I wanna say, and Lila Reynolds no Lila Reynolds dot com and Gavin Reynolds dot me. Because they were available and and I've been looking um off and on for a while um to sort of have something that is, you know, in case you wanna use this in the future for email, for a website, for whatever, here's a thing. Um and and yeah, I I finally found them. I found I finally found that they're available because they hadn't been at various times. So, um, yeah. I did that for my niece. I realized that 
but I did it kind of weirdly in secret because I realized and let's see if my brother even listens to this podcast um, but he had not purchased my niece's domain name and so I scooped it <laughs> for the next five years and I have yet to decide what to do with it part of me is just going to play the long game and then part of me is like maybe I should throw something weird up on it <laughs> in case I think you should totally figure out what to like re use it as a redirect domain yeah and just make sure it pops up from time to time in family conversation <laughs> just be like Dude, yeah, and then people go to it. It's weird that it resolves to like the Museum of Tissues or something. It was this really s like specialized Japanese knife company. It's just so odd. Yeah. <laughs> um, but well, yeah, we'll see. coupon applied. <laughs> coupon. But yeah, I'm gonna. I'm curious to know how long it will take him to be like, oh, maybe I'll buy a thing like a, a domain or whatever, and then realize it's taken. <laughs> What, um, what's with coupons on Amazon? It doesn't make any sense. Like you go to buy a product and it's like, oh, you can apply a coupon to this right now. Why not just put the selling price at what the coupon gives me? Like, oh, like I, Amazon. I have to click twice because now to get and it's, selling, Because the selling price is defined by the seller and am, the coupon is offered by Amazon. But as a seller on Amazon, I could, I could add coupons to my products. So I, yeah, well. I don't, I don't, yeah, that I don't maybe know. for I, tracking like it's more of a promotional they want to see where you're from and it's like the 10 percent is is not really the point of it it's more like they want to see where you're entering from well no this is like on the actual product listing on amazon.com so like below the price it's like oh there's a five percent off coupon hmm. yeah i don't, don't know. ask, I me, I ask a five pack of ultrasonic sensors for my raspberry pi this morning and saved 50 cents. I'll ask Jeff Bezos no. next time we're on a, on a, on a call. On a one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, on our one next Thank one, you. On one. Yeah, make sure you follow up on that next week, next week in our meeting. <laughs> Add to the agenda. Uh, my, my partner has been getting recently uh, a ton of emails for Elwood Reynolds. <laughs> This happens per periodically and eventually the person, because it happened a couple of years ago, because her, she's got a Gmail account and sort of a, you know, generic sort of name account and, but it's not her actual name, it's her initials. Um, and so, um, so yeah, uh, there, she got something before and eventually they stopped because probably the person figured out that that wasn't their email address, but Elwood, Elwood is persistent and Elwood was signing up for a home security system. Um, and, so, <laughs> and so she got one day, she got like 20 emails for like password reset or like activation emails for his home security. And like, I, <laughs> Elwood really needs to know what his email address is before he can activate home security because he's got some problems if he doesn't know his own email address. Well, there's some security <laughs> issues that are happening clearly across the board for Elwood that need to be locked down. <laughs> There was a car salesman in Minnesota by the name of Norman Coco at a Toyota dealership who sold a car to someone whose email address was close to mine. So every year for years, I would get a, hey, it's your anniversary of buying this car from me. Oh, Coco. no. <laughs> so I, I, the first year I replied, I'm like, hey, it's the wrong email address. Heard nothing. I forgot about it. The next year came by and I got this email and I saw like on my phone, like an email from Norman Coco. Like, Norman Coco, that name sounds familiar. <laughs> Open the email. I'm like, son of a bitch. I don't know why. It really got me mad though. So then like it was my life's mission to like get Norman Coco's attention and get me off this list. So I sent an email and I sent a reminder for like every day for that week to email Norman Coco. No reply, no reply, no reply, no reply. So then I was like, well, now I'm gonna start sending Norman Coco up for email he doesn't want to receive. So email address. No. But everything is opt-in these days, which is good because of jerks like me. So that went nowhere fast. So then I was like, well, okay, like maybe it's an automated system, right? Mm -hmm. um, Probably. So I tried to figure out like what system it was. I couldn't. Um, and ultimately it finally stopped after like six or seven years. So gcovar at gmail.com or whoever thinks they have that email address bought a car from someone else or Norman Coca gave up trying to sell them a new car. On the universe. <laughs>
Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. her first words will be Norman Coco. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to be like, where did she learn that? Ah, uh, <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> so on the show, uh, typically we have a, a topic of some sort, and uh, the way it works is Allison, 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 not Allison, not Aliasin either. Although that's kind of cool. That is um, kind of cool. <laughs> it's like, uh, you might adopt that. Yeah. Uh, bring us a topic, that, uh, something to talk about, and Gary and I don't know what it is and probably don't know anything about it. And then we attempt to discuss the topic for a period of time until we stop. And then we find out what it actually is. And uh, then um, we answer questions if there are any. I actually explained this topic to my dad, um, uh, or the, this concept to my dad. This is what the show does. And I gave him the example of um, uh, cryptozoology, and he did pretty well. Maybe he needs to be a guest. Nice. <laughs> oh, how much fun would it be to like, <laughs> hey, I'm alive with me today is my dad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't even imagine having my parents on the podcast. Right. Oh, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> Weird. They'd be, they'd be totally, I, I think they'd be game for it only because it's like they love things like Balderdash and they love BSing people, which is a really interesting quality <laughs> to have. I, I might wait until after he retires to invite him on though. Pro probably he'll have a little bit more time then. <laughs> time to explore the topic, which the topic is not Norman Coco. The topic... Oh. <laughs> Oh, we already talked about Norman Cook. Yeah, I know. It's like, I've already explained. Um, the topic is R.H. Null. R.H. Null. R.H. Null? Yeah. Can you spell it? R.H. Space Null. N-U-L-L. It's left-handedness. <laughs> is it not? Clearly, it's left-handedness. That's, I think we should just end the podcast right there because that's, I don't think, it's like the quickest, weirdest answer. And yet it makes the most sense. It makes more sense than what it actually is. Don't. Well, we can edit Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it is. Yeah. Previously thought to be dot dot dot. Actually, <laughs> as a left-handed person, I love that answer. <laughs> oh, I'm not left-handed. I'm original. <laughs> I'm under attack. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, Gary disappears from screen because he's taken yeah. down by a gigantic animal. <laughs> All right, Snow. I, 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 I want it to be Rx null. Why? Just so it can be a no prescription bound. <laughs> <laughs> um, or like, but maybe, maybe the doctor's um, handwriting is so, so bad. Yeah. That, that I've even like, I've misspoken. It's not even Rh null. I'm like, oh, maybe it is. Maybe it is an X. Well, uh, good, good old uh, Ricky Henderson null uh was once uh the president of the null foundation and <laughs> founded the null foundation in 1900 <laughs> um and and then when the y2k bug became a thing um uh ricky henderson null was just shortened to rh null and it was used to describe uh the turning of the years on uh, computers. Does an RH, it, I feel like this has to do with blood. Like, I'm a positive RH null. <laughs> but what does it mean? What does it mean? I, it's, um, <laughs> but I also want to know what the Null Foundation is like. Do they give grants? Are they like, oh. can you be a, a fellow of the Null <laughs> Foundation? What they do? Not much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a think tank. The board of directors just sort of... Do they even meet? No. <laughs> do we have quorum? They meet, they meet on every null every Wednesday. Wednesday. Every null Wednesday. There's lots of cancellations happening. 
I just can't make it this week. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. My schedule has nothing on it. <laughs> <laughs> I am absolutely empty for this week. <laughs> just the way we like it here at the Null Foundation. <laughs> Send that invite. And all the all the door handles are just zeros with like a big. <laughs> Wouldn't they just be like a hole where a door handle should be? Yeah, <laughs> maybe not even a door. Maybe I'm giving them way too much credit. Why do they even have it's an office space? Like, <laughs> yeah, like what's your address? Well, it's like platform nine and three quarters. Yes. Yeah. Man, it all comes back to Harry Potter. <laughs> I like I, I like thinking of the Null Foundation as an alternative to the Acme Company. <laughs> you know, because Acme is oh. in every Acme is in every cartoon ever. So the Null Foundation is like their antithesis. <laughs> yeah. So like instead of their their products, like and Acme makes everything. So they, Null makes. Wiley Coyote always has problems with Acme products, right? He should order from Null. Yeah, and then they would never come. <laughs> Yeah, when, when is it? When is it being delivered? <laughs> Delivery. <laughs> really compelling <laughs> audio content right now. <laughs> oh, that's the saddest delivery estimation. No. No. Yeah. Uh. So R H no. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what what it has to do with blood, Gary. Uh, I think that you might be onto something. The RH factor is null, but what is RH? Yeah. I don't know. Riboflavin? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's wait. Do we, do we, <laughs> you said that with a little bit of confidence. What is riboflavin? <laughs> I have no idea. Because I... It's a long word, and I think that they can measure how much riboflavin you have by your blood. Riboflavin but... hematype. I feel like riboflavin is in cereal. Yeah, but it's like, uh, it's like, uh, what's that other stuff? Iron. Like iron's in your blood, but you get it from other stuff, right? It's exactly it's like iron. Gate. Yeah, riboflavin and iron are essentially like, the same things. They go, they go together like peanut butter yeah. and eggs. I mean, iron is an element. Riboflavin, clearly. Is an, it rolls off your tongue. Riboflavin. Name for... <laughs> For our less than loyal listeners, ribo. our backgrounds are not in science. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. We're more of an arts that. background type people. <laughs> um, it, I still think it has something to do with a blood measurement. Sure. You have no RH in your blood. I think it's... I think that you have no markers for RH in your blood. Your RH null. Like we couldn't find any. We need more blood. Then we can get a definitive answer. But what is RH then? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the riboflavin hematite. <laughs> which is which is a measurement of how much cereal you've consumed. <laughs> I'm just picturing I'm picturing sitting in a waiting room and you coming in in like a white lab coat and trying <laughs> <laughs> and trying to just be like your riboflavin hematobin is it's just like very low and <laughs> we're, gonna need to do blood, we're gonna either need to do a blood transfusion or you're going to need to eat far more lucky charms <laughs> you either need more or less blood we're gonna try one <laughs> the 50 50 and that's the way science works we're putting more in one arm and taking some out of the other arm yeah <laughs> it's like uh doc um Dr. Spachemin from 30 Rock. Yeah, I feel like you're, you're like two steps away from using leeches instead of like actual medical equipment. Isn't putting crickets, blood in uh, and taking blood out of the- It's in my stocking, so that probably is two steps away from- <laughs> Isn't putting blood in and taking blood out literally a dialysis? It's different blood. Different blood. <laughs> Trust me, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I do need a white lab. I, I trust you yeah. to know, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to keep a lab coat on hand for a future episode and just throw it on when I start talking out of my rear. Talking sciencey. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> pretending to talk sciencey. 
<laughs> we know like when the lab coat comes out. It sounds like a segment we should have. Talk in sciency with binary jazz. <laughs> Did I, I told you my middle school teacher um, called me Dr. Kovar, right? Middle school no. science teacher? No. Uh, like Kovar. jokingly or they were confident? I don't know. It's just like the first week of school, he started calling me Dr. Kovar, and that was it for the semester or for the year, I guess, because we didn't do semesters. It was middle school. So Mr. Shea was calling me Dr. Kovar. Everyone else got their first name, but I was Dr. Kovar. Interesting. Probably because I was like a, a smart ass, lippy kid. So I'm sure I said something. He said, Thank you, Dr. Kovar. And then it stuck. <laughs> was, uh, was the teacher an actual doctor? No, he was not. He was great, though. He, um, he had, I feel like, back in the early 90s, and he had um, somehow gotten to school to um, hook up the free NASA feed that schools could get. So when you finish your work, you could go watch the NASA channel in the back of his classroom. And we did some like full around video editing and stuff. And um, I mean, he was like, you know, when you talked about like atmosphere, he would do the bell jar with an inflated balloon in there to start class and just push the button and stand there as the balloon expanded and totally exploded inside the bell jar. It was, I mean, it was, it was good science. He was, he was fantastic. I feel, like, I feel was like if he was actually a doctor, he'd be less uh, flippant with the use of the, of, of the title of doctor. Because I had a teacher in high school, a uh, chemistry teacher who was a doctor. Met, uh, he had a doctorate and he insisted that he be referred to as doctor whatever his last name was i can't remember or doc but like doctor needed to be included and you do not he is not mister he and he made that the old like i didn't go to eight school eight years of of medical school to be called mister i am doctor it was a it was a big deal so i like i think that like if, if you if he I feel like he would not be calling people in his in his class doctor as a joke because counterpoint of school. One of our QA folks um, is a um, is a uh, professor at a uh, a school here in Florida. Uh, I think it's a college, not a university. I don't know, but he is a doctor, and I didn't know that. And um, we were, I said something. Uh, and called him doctor. And he's like, yeah, actually I am. What? So <laughs> some doctors aren't stuck up about it. Some people fly under the radar. I've had, I've had teachers in my past that have done kind of both, they flipped both where I didn't know they had their doctorate until later. And then also the stodgy, like I didn't do this many years of school to be called Mr. Like, like you peons and schmoes. <laughs> Well, it's really, it was, it school. It was really funny because he was, he, was totally, he was totally doing it just to be an asshole about it. Like consciously be an asshole. Not, not like, like he's stuffy or stuck up or anything. He was just being an asshole. Like, and he was like, cause that was a sort of, cause he was like a really young teacher uh, and which was sort of, you know, I think he probably just got out of school um, or recently. And that's why he's teaching high school. Um, and like he would hang out with, with students and, um, and it turned out later doing drugs and date students. So that was a thing. Um, Great. <laughs> Always got to have one of those teachers in the yeah. back. You know. so, so he was like a holistic asshole. I mean, yeah. he was an asshole yeah. about one thing. He was all an around. Yeah. All around. But like, you well, know, was, the fun kind. You know what you're getting. <sighs> the kind that, you know, you go to a, a, a Pet Shop Boys concert with, and do some, do some MDMA with, you know, as a casual thing. Super cash. <laughs> Just every year of high school. Was... Not, not that that totally happened to a friend of mine or anything. Oh. And then, and then, and, and my best, <laughs> my best story. So specific. <laughs> my best story about about this experience was that at said Pet Shop Boys concert, which may or may not have actually happened, he referred to it as fisting music. What? <laughs> he's, like, he's like, this is such fisting music. It makes me want to shove my hand up another man's rectum. Wow. To pet shop boys. Yeah, that's your yeah, thing. Boys, Don't huh? Coco. Well, I'm never going to listen to Coco's pet shop boys. Dr. Coco's time right now. <laughs> sort of changes your perception of pet shop boys. Really does. <laughs> I don't know if I appreciate that. <laughs> Here I don't. we are in Binary <laughs> Jazz ruining pet shop boys for everyone. <laughs> binary <laughs> Jazz ruining pet um, shop boys since 19. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so what is R H null? Yeah, we're at the time where we need to know the answer. Oh goodness. Okay, um, so it is a rare blood disorder. So R H is a type of blood. like um, antigen within red blood cells. Um, and it's an addition to, so like you have your normal blood types, like A, B, O, like all the, but it's an addition to that. So you can be like A negative, RH null. On top of it. Um, and they originally thought that people with RH null blood were able to like, basically like, I, I, like live to survival to like a full adulthood. Um, but they can, and there's like maybe 30 to 40 documented cases of people with RH null blood. And it's, incredibly rare so if they have any medical issues that obviously it's a huge problem uh blood so, make it so that they can't get blood transfusions because there is no rh no blood at the blood bank yeah basically because it's like there's just and also those are the only documented cases so a lot of the time because if people don't have maybe a high number of medical issues then they wouldn't actually be ever a thing that would arise because you wouldn't have the blood tests to know that you are RH null in addition to your normal mm -hmm. blood. What, so what does RH stand for? It's a good question. I don't know. Let's look. Do, do, do. We should set up an e-shop where we sell buttons to say, that's a good question. That's a good question. But they call, right. then there's, there's all, there's like little articles that talk about, um, like golden blood and like it's the rarest blood and they they get they wax very poetic about these people i don't but know if rh actually stands for anything no one's breaking it down it's just the rh system that's weird though really hard to find really hard yeah, <laughs> yeah really, really hard, hard the last three words are hyphenated really hard to find rh no oh now i'm getting into like incredible biology academia here. <laughs> I'll report back. <laughs> uh, we're going to be so, starting a, a cloud or a, a cloud fund? No, a, uh, we're going to crowdsource funding to buy access to some academic documents on this. <laughs> Get a real auto, <laughs> a real bibliography footnote situation happening. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, that would be that would be a, a change. I actually realized uh, this morning that I hadn't even done uh, notes or anything from the last episode. So, so like having actual uh, footnotes <laughs> would be uh, would be a major step up. <laughs> I like uh, that footnotes step up. Ooh, Hopefully. yeah, that was marketing nice. back to our first episode: barefoot running, <laughs> which was that was um, a long time ago, wasn't it? Yes. Let's see. Was that was that in 2018 or was that at the end of 17? Oh, it was 2018. It was actually uh, our first episode was a year ago last week. We have actually officially gone through an entire year. What? January 4th, 2018 was Barefoot Running. That's amazing. For handshakes all around. Pats on the back, everybody. Proud of us. Yeah. Hot chocolate for everyone. I'm, I'm into this. Um, okay, so do you have a qu any questions? We did not have any listener submitted questions. No, I was relying uh, on you, faithful listeners. Yeah. I've got nothing. Um, I've, we've got one question uh, from Allison from November uh, yeah. that we could do. Uh, I don't think. Where's November? Have... What year? Where? November. No, I said where is November? Where is November? Uh, last year. Allison from November. Oh, oh I see. Stupid. It was. Oh, I, sorry, I said it. <laughs> I've been doing dad jokes for like weeks straight here, and I, I talking to human beings after like three days without is. At least I I like that we're classified as human beings. I don't think we have any Twitter. Well, I mean, you're not R H null, so no, not yet, not that I know of. So, listeners, if you would like uh, to submit us a question, uh, please do. And uh, we will determine the RH null factor of uh, your tweet um, <laughs> through a very complicated process of um, airing it on the show and then uh, answering the question. Rolling down the window and looking for a rest area. Uh, you can do it on Twitter or you can uh, go to binaryjazz.us and there's a form on that page somewhere 
and you can just put your question right in there. And so we ah, and the form is not subject to government shutdown. So <laughs> perfect. You can submit and we will get it. And we will receive the email somehow. Even if it just dodges our inboxes and goes straight to spam, we will get it eventually. Um, because it's all saved. You still read spam? Occasionally. Some that's where all, that's where all my binary jazz emails go. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> all I get is email from Norman Coco. So I, <laughs> I don't even know what email is. From Norman Coco. Um, our, uh, our question from November is whom would you want to be your amazing race partner? Allison. Like, why? <laughs> why? Why? What makes you think that that is a good idea? Uh, several reasons. One, I think that you have like an incredible wealth of knowledge that we would pop up in a situation and be like, oh, yeah, bam. Be like, we uh, clearly any, need to like, order the green curry in this situation. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, and I feel like that you um, are um, observant of, um, of culture. So I feel like you would, you would pick up on things that would matter in the context of the amazing race. So I'm going to be a damn good time. because I have never watched. To tell. I've never watched Amazing Race, so I would need some context about what is involved. And I'm guessing it's not running. Have you seen NASCAR? Yes. <laughs> Total different kind of racing. Right. <laughs> I was like, how are you going to compare this to NASCAR? <laughs> think of NASCAR and then think of the opposite. I do feel like there's some running involved, though. I feel like that's where I would... I don't know. Because I feel like time is of the essence. They're trying to get from, like, destination to destination, and I feel like that would It's just as right. likely, though, in the first episode, we find ourselves in a tea shop and talk about why the time didn't matter. Is this, is this like... Whatever. Like a real-life uh, version of the game Ticket to Ride? I haven't where you're trying to, to ride. Where you're trying to like get from one place to another place and go yeah. the longest distance. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a global scavenger hunt. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Uh, then I would probably choose my partner, Aaron. Yeah. Because of the basically the same reason you gave for use, for choosing Allison. You have to like think fast and like also get along with the person and like hope for the best with your backpack situation as well see i think i'd be probably better at the thinking fast and she'd be better about the thinking correct yeah so like you'd throw you'd spitball all the ideas and then she'd be like we're just like, no two. let's go like <laughs> <laughs> these are the winners from that that brainstorm yeah and i mean we've been partners for going on 17 years so when, when it's worked it's work, it's work so far. Hmm? And we've got communication. I think the, the bummer about Amazing Race is that I feel like so much of it is like the antithesis of my travel style where they like jet through and they don't seem to like really get to enjoy the actual place to the, ex to the extent that like I would want to be like, let's sit in a coffee shop for a while. Mm. So Gary, that's what you would have to look forward to if we were partners on The Amazing Race, is that I'd be like, we're not going to win The Amazing Race, but by gum, we're going to enjoy each of these <laughs> destinations. That's fine. I'm cool with that. And then the producers of the show would probably be really upset because we'd be like, oh, Maybe we're not right. Us, edit us out entirely. <laughs> yeah. Opening credit, we would be like this like blurred blob when we go to like get our first clue. We're just like sitting in a restaurant being like, this is an amazing recommendation. This is great. I'm glad we did our <laughs> we research. catch this flight outside? Yeah. The Western Hemisphere? <laughs> nah, there's enough to see here first. We'll there's catch enough. up. Let's stay here a few more days. Why not? Yeah, we'll catch up. It'll be fine. <laughs> let, them, let them sprint and sweat. It's fine. Seems like a lot of work, that running thing. <laughs> Seems like a lot of work. You clapping because we're none? Mm -hmm. Yep. It wasn't Whoa. that bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. fun. It's been a while. And next, uh, next episode, we'll all have to wear masks. And then we will all have to mask our voices. And then the listeners will have to figure out... 
Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Thank you.